tonight's episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer with Randy Davis. We're talking to some of our local queer talent who are going to be performing on Wednesday evening at Georgian Theatre as part of the Slay Stigma Tour with myself hosting and the wonderful Trinity K. Bonet. Stay tuned for a great show and we look forward to seeing you on October 16th at Georgian Theatre. Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer with Randy Davis. Almost messed up my name there. Uh, on tonight's episode, we are focusing on the Slay Stigma Tour that is uh, going to be in Barrie next week on October 16th. We've got uh, one, two, three, four local queens and a local king performing along with the P-Flag Choir and our headliner, Trinity K. Bonet from season six of RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, the whole point of the Slay Stigma tour is to do that. Slay Stigma and talk about U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable, all around what it means to live with HIV in 2019. Uh, I've got some of our local queens who are going to be performing on the show on, uh, on Wednesday evening with me here today to talk about the show, to talk about um, drag in general, and to give us an idea of what we can expect on Wednesday night. So I'm going to start off with uh, my friend Carmen Del Rey and oh, Randy. Jem Doshe. Randy. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for oh, having us. a pleasure. Excellent. Well, I'm really happy to that, uh, that you're here. I'm thrilled that you're going to be part of the Slay Stigma Tour. Uh, it's obviously, as someone living with HIV, a very near and dear mm -hmm to my heart and uh, I've been fortunate enough to be asked to host the tour right across Canada which is which is fabulous um, the fact that we are back here in Barrie with not only our local queens to highlight yourselves but to have what I believe is the first time a RuPaul's drag queen here in Barrie I, I, I don't think I'm not made that north right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah with Toronto and then it sort of stops there you got yeah, it. Anything, anything, right there on the map everything's north when you get past Bloor right that's yes. what they say in Toronto anyway so tell me a little bit about um, your your drag aesthetic sure. what uh, how long you've been doing drag and a little bit about your history Excellent. So once again, my name is Carmen Del Rey. It's a pleasure to be here this evening as well. I've been doing drag professionally for one year. Um, rewind years ago, as heavy queer little child, we were trying on mom's dresses and messing around. But then I started taking it very seriously. And so did therapy. No, <laughs> it, um, it I'm going to need that after the show. <laughs> I hear you. And uh, it was fabulous because um, I was in a direction of doing my own shows, um, just at karaoke shows in town. And I'm from Bradford, Ontario. Um, so the community is quite small. So the start was uh, you could do what you can to get the gig even if it was a shot of tequila and five bucks, right. you know, just to get your name out and become the entertainer. Um, it takes work, it takes patience, and it definitely takes lots of that. Uh, it is not a cheap hobby. Yeah, I think the first rewarding. time I saw you perform was at uh, the now defunct Lakeside Upper Deck. Correct. Yeah. And that was a great start. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was, that's where we met, of course, and that's Correct. where I first got onto stage. and. I remember my first time on stage, I yes. was about six feet away from the edge, so concerned because I couldn't see because of the lights and not having my glasses or my contacts or nothing in, and just going, oh, I, I'm okay. And then I kept watching the edge and everyone's like, you're five feet, you're fine, move <laughs> forward. <laughs> I was going to sort of interrupt there. I was going to say as well, even with drag itself, I was going to Sephora and I didn't know, I didn't even know how to put on lip gloss. If right. I'm for the sake of me. Still don't. Thank you. <laughs> my sister. There's the shape you're I love her so much. <laughs> oh my much. God, you're my favorite. I love her. You're hurting me. Um, yes. Don't touch no. <laughs> me. We are sisters. She is actually part of the House of Devereaux. Mm -hmm. uh, my drag mother, Miss Claire Dever herself, uh, has been working for well over 35 years in the yes. professional world of drag. Mm -hmm. And has well, also won a couple of pageants as well. And the thing is about drag itself is when you have the mentorship and you have the guidance, um, it's just smooth sailing from sure. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it takes it takes the time, but is completely rewarding. I would not have had the opportunities if it wasn't for drag. And it's a double persona, so it helps out. Um, my boy name is Sheldon. Um, oh, the illusion's ruined. <laughs> it's a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But yes, moving forward, um, <laughs> and it's quite uh, 
Quite an art, yeah. art form as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, that's the big thing too. Is it's and it's always constantly changing. Like my aesthetic when I first started is I'm going to do like '80s pop songs, really right. live up to that you know, gem name. Because you know that old '80s cartoon, Gem and the Holograms. That's where my name comes yeah. from. And I figured I'll just do like the big hair, the '80s stuff. And I realized while I enjoyed doing it, it just wasn't working for me. So I started to move into more like like a Broadway kind of feel or like the old town like country music kind of stuff. Like just you know trying to find like my niche. So yep. I. Started out one way, changed directions, and I'm sure I'll change directions again. Well, that's what, for me anyway, that, that yes. fascinates me about drag because you've said you've been doing it for a year now. Correct. And Lakeside Upper Deck opened about a year ago. Yes. So I would have seen you in the early stages of your drag. And I, Very and, early. And seeing you again today, <laughs> I, I have seen that progression. Thank you. Jem, I was at your first performance at, at Lakeside, yes. and I have seen a huge progression from your original drag. The same with uh, with your uh, your sister Justine. I remember when I first met Justine when I moved to Barrie, mm -hmm. and I have pictures of Justine in drag when I first met Justine, and when I see Justine now, it's like the, the just up in the game. Every every single time I see you girls. You, you've gone up to that next level. I think that's absolutely fabulous, and and I think part of that, I'm yeah. sure you'll agree, <laughs> is the whole aspect of having that that family behind you, that mentorship yeah. you talked about. Yeah, there has been queens without drag families, but when you want to go see a show, it's nice to see a, a solo performer uh, doing their own thing. Yeah. but it makes a show when there is more performers, a family, there's a connection, and you can see mm -hmm. it on stage. Um, a lot of the younger queens um, just they think throwing a wig, a shake and go wig, call it a day. Yeah. No, no boobs, no ass, no nothing. Hit forever twenty one, grab yeah, a dress. Got it. <laughs> and you know what? It's a start, but then sometimes you'll get the mentorship yeah. from me or you know Jum as yeah. well, saying, "Hey, girl, uh, rice tits. They're cheap. You put a little bit. You can <laughs> stop now. Now I'm now I'm losing my track here. Okay." <laughs> Edit, edit. So yes, with rice tits, <laughs> with rice tits, yeah, um, it's a start, but it, but it is a progression to get. It's a start of a nice point. light snack. <laughs> there you go. Can't wait till lunch. <laughs> You'll have to explain that. What are rice tits? So basically, um, in the early stages of drag, especially when you're on a budget, mm -hmm. um, basmati rice and stockings. Yeah, uh, okay. it gives the illusion. Stuff uh, those in the brassiere. You got it. Sometimes I've cooked on stage as well. <laughs> oh, so when the lights hungry, are too hot. Oh, yeah. Oh girl. <laughs> Get a little soy sauce, uh, and you're ready to go. Yeah, well, I sweat soy sauce, so that just all works out for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the smell I smell on stage. Um, but yes, the early stages of drag and mentorship is completely important. Some queens don't take the advice, and some queens do. Um, I mean, I took a lot of any advice that was given to me. I took like with you know so much like to heart, and I'm just like, so you're saying try this, and I'm gonna try this, and if it doesn't yes. work, it doesn't work. But you tried. I probably spend maybe two or three hours almost every day just yes. doing a different face, trying a different lash, different eye, you know, just trying to perfect the skills that I have, make them better than what they are. And I'm getting better. Yes, yes you are, dear. <laughs> well, yeah, and like I say, I, I've seen the progression in, in both of you, and I think Thank it's you. it's wonderful. It, it shows that you actually have not only appreciation for the craft, but you're you're committed. Yeah. And if I may as well, um, especially for drag as well, a lot of queens think they have to do all the new songs that are on the radio that's all the rage. Yeah. No, you can do your old school Bette Midler and your old school Whitney and yeah. Cher and all the classics. Sure. Drag has no age. That was one thing yes. my drag mother did tell me. Yeah. Drag has no age. Yeah. And um, you can do any generation because we're playing a character. We're not. Yeah. We are human beings. <laughs> Some of us have no soul. Yeah, the big, th <laughs> the big thing too, like when selecting songs, like I used to just try to go, what would everyone else like? And then my performances were just so stiff and wooden. And then I realized, mm -hmm. forget what people like. Let's find what I like and sure. make them like it. Yeah. And so from that, I started to evolve and go, I enjoy doing these and this and that. And it was just like really, you know, kind of finding again where I want it to be and just working within that. Yeah. What does a drag what? performance from Carmen Del Rey look like? So a typical performance would start off, um, we start with our intros yep. and we work there. We do a little bit of Kiki. If you don't know what Kiki is, <laughs> Google, Google. Google. <laughs> Exactly. We don't have time for that here. Yep. Um, but then it will, I like to do the generations of music. We, I always go by the audience. We, um, as entertainers, we should be having our music on USB sticks. Yep. Um, and you always come prepared. 
you look at the crowd. If you know you have uh, a crowd of people in their 40s to this 60s range, you know you're going to do a little bit of the classics. Right. And if you have some of the young folks, what I seem to do, um, there's a fabulous channel on YouTube. Um, Jem, we, we, we oh, postmodern jukebox. Postmodern jukebox. Yes. We like to take the older, the newer songs that we hear on the radio today, and then it's sung in an older style. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, like a 1920s vintage yeah, kind got of it. feel, and it's so, fantastic. So there's a hot song on the radio right now, Old Time. Old Town uh, Road, yes. Old Town Road, mm. yep. which I seem to love. And I've overworked that number. <laughs> I'm already sick of it, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this fantastic cover we have, it's got like an Aretha Franklin kind of style to it. And, yeah, see, and that, Carmen right. gets it perfect almost every time. So you make it your own. The tip show. The yeah, tip the tip show. show, the tip show. Just the cash is just dropping out of my pockets. <laughs> Always tip your drag queens. Yes. Always. Uh, it, it is definitely, it's, it's definitely an art form <laughs> and sometimes a living as well. Yes, yes. And what about uh, yourself, Jim? Um, well, again, I just try to focus like on songs that I love doing and then just getting them done. But when you come to one of my shows, I'm always changing, evolving. I won't lie to you, I'm still a little stiff on stage. I'm still getting, I'm still fairly new to the game, so right. I'm still getting used to moving around in heels. Um, I think I can comfortably run down up to 13 inches. <laughs> <laughs> I say comfortably. Some of us have <laughs> Not that size really stage. matters, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have fallen off stage. I remember I was walking out of the dressing room one time from a show, clipboard in hand, pen. <sighs> I started to slip and my reaction was, oh, I don't want to land on this and just <laughs> tossed it across the room. <laughs> And I think I would have gotten away with it, gotten up gracefully, if that clipboard didn't hit somebody. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, who did the clipboard hit? <laughs> it hit somebody who turned or saw me on the ground and yelled, Queen down! <laughs> I was like, oh no! And that's how I landed a goose head on my... Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding like a conehead point right now. <laughs> leg up, leg up. That's, that's the yep. reputation. That's leg up, it. boots out. <laughs> now, aside from the, uh, the Slay Stigma Tour um, happening Wednesday night, where else can our, uh, our local folks see you perform? Uh, here's a little plug. Excellent. <laughs> plug away. Um, it's f- <laughs> so we got all our pre-tickets? No. no. <laughs> uh, so we do perform uh, at Big Daddy's in Newmarket, Ontario yeah. um, on Sunday evenings and the show starts at 9 o'clock. Yeah, and that's every week. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Show okay. starts right at 9, promptly. Like if a queen shows up late, we try not to wait for her. <laughs> I don't know. Queens Why don't show up late, do they? No, queens are never late. <clears throat> Drag right time. Listen, I was very impressed <laughs> at uh, the timeliness of, uh, of your arrival today for the taping. So mm-hmm. I appreciate that. I really, really am grateful that you're part of the, uh, the Slay Stigma Tour. I- Please welcome Justine Diaz. Hello. And James P. Rick. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for being with me this evening. Thank you for having us. Yourselves and my previous guests, Carmen and uh, and Jem. Oh. And there's another queen. Remind me who that is. Uh, that will be Luna. Luna will be joining you on stage. That is correct. With the P Flag Choir and the wonderful Trinity K. Bonet. <gasps> yeah, I know. Season six, RuPaul's Drag Race. It's amazing. What's fabulous about Trinity as well, not only is she an amazing queen, but she's also, like myself, living with HIV. Yes, she is. And as you know, that's the whole point of the Slay mm-hmm. Stigma Tour. We're, we're going on tour to entertain, but to educate and let folks know what it means to live with HIV in 2019. Mm-hmm. And talk about the fact that those of us who are living with HIV, who are on our meds and have an undetectable viral load, can't pass it on. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get HIV from me. Um, tell me why you thought being part of this tour would be important for you and and what message besides just the wonderful entertaining that you do do you want to bring to uh, to the show on Wednesday night um, well first of all when I was asked to do the show by yourself thank you very very much um, it first of all totally blew my mind because a I get to perform on such a grand scale for such a wonderful um, function that is going out to support um, and help people living with HIV live a normal life and just be uh, the people that they want to be and help end the stigma. Like for most people don't even know that HIV has any like prep and pep and all of these things. When I start talking to people about uh, the U equals U campaign and all those things, they have no idea. Mm-hmm. So I think for myself, it's a way for myself to help um, spread the word and spread the education through our community. That's great. Yeah, it's it's definitely something that uh, that is needed. And as much of the education that I've done since moving to Barrie, um, you're right. There are still vast numbers of folks that don't understand what it means to be 100%. undetectable, um, and and 
still there's people out there that think sharing a glass of water with me mm -hmm. is uh, is an issue. So, 100%. and what about you, James? What attracted you to uh, becoming part of this tour? Well, so many people are uneducated on HIV and what it actually is. They think it's all, like you said, you can't share a glass of water, can't even kiss kind of thing. And I want to help educate those who don't know. When I was asked to do the tour, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to help spread the awareness and the education and uh, just be part of something that's growing and being more aware. Right. What does, what does a performance look like when, when you're on stage, James? Uh, I try not to be all over the stage looking like I don't know what I'm doing. I pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fake it till you make it, right? Exactly. 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 And how long have you been doing um, drag? Three months, to believe really? it or not. Really? Wow. It's only three months. And uh, I've come this far and I've, I've grown so much and I've learned so much. I know there's more that I need to learn. I need more stage presence, more uh, performance. And I need to learn how to dance like a man, or right. dance. <laughs> Well, it's it's like I was speaking with uh, with Carmen and, and Jem. It's it's an evolution, too, yeah. right? And and I mentioned previously how much I have seen you, Justine, change mm -hmm. from the time we met, what almost three years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and your aesthetic, and you just every time I see you, your game level just keeps going up, and I think it's absolutely fabulous. I, I love to look back at some of the old pictures yeah. that I have of, uh, of us together yeah. in, in the alley of uh, Fox Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Those were but, the good but, old days. But to, see, but to see where you've gone from there and the things you've done mm -hmm. is absolutely wonderful. So Thank tell you. us a little bit about that journey that you've um, had. Well, it's been an amazing journey. I've had um, a lot of wonderful people in my life give me direction. Like Carmen was saying, you know, with them being a part of the Devereaux family and like having that 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 family connection having people help you it's a wonderful thing i unfortunately don't have a drag family so i've kind of l learned on my own with the help of other drag queens watching tutorials on youtube um, asking my makeup artist friends for help um, and just sitting in my room like jem was saying sitting in your room sitting in front of your makeup uh, mirror and just painting trying a new contour technique, a new eye technique, uh, a different way to like glue your lashes on, just something that's gonna work for you because what works for one performer doesn't always work for another, so you kind of have to find where your niche falls. Um, for myself, my aesthetic is classy yet trashy, so I am like a 50s, 60s housewife meets Barbarella. Um, I really enjoy a lot of classic looks but I really like to throw it down with some like old school R and B and like get down and dirty. So right, right. And what about yourself, James? What, what, what sort of aesthetic do you go for when you're? Uh, when I you're go performing? for more of the dapper look. Uh, I do do some punk rock. Uh, I love rock. <laughs> I love to just move around on stage. I want to ex more uh, explore uh, my talents, see okay. where I could go. Like I want to get into hip hop. I'm going to be taking hip hop dance lessons soon. Oh, cool. um, and I would love to learn tap because I know like that's that's really big one with the the 1920s songs mm -hmm. that I like to do. Right, absolutely. And I know Justine is a, a local queen, as in very local. What about yourself? I am uh, originally from a small town called Mount Albert. Okay. It is just a small little country town, surrounded by trees, forest, <laughs> farm, and uh, I. Uh, I never really saw myself here back then when I lived out in the country. <laughs> right. So what but, is it that attracted you to uh, to drag? Well, I've always, like, mm, RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, <laughs> but I always thought, wouldn't it be cool if women could dress up as men? Right. And I've wanted to do that, and I never knew where to start until this coming year. And I've been watching Drag Kings on YouTube and Instagram, and I've been learning from them because there's a different makeup contouring and sure. different eyes and it's 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 a completely different different era for right because it's one thing for a man to put on makeup to become more feminine mm -hmm. and for the same process right only sort of in reverse it's i the guess complete opposite yeah. yeah you have to like chisel and masculate your face instead of trying to soften and feminize your yeah. face it's it's the art of of drag whether you're a king a queen uh a hyper queen um you know whatever whatever your genre of drag a bearded queen i just i love it all the the whole umbrella of drag mm -hmm. and everything that belongs there's underneath no it limits. there's no limits it's wonderful 
Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that's great about drag, or at least the drag that I've always seen is that acceptance mm -hmm. of yeah. all the variations of mm -hmm. what drag can mean to an individual. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it really is it's personal, right? Yeah, big and, time. And I think that, uh, that that acceptance is part of what this show is all about as well, and making sure that, you know, I don't want to just highlight queens, but kings mm -hmm. and certainly hyper queens and bearded Bearded yeah, queens. Absolutely. There's, there is a I rumor that at some stop along the way on this Slay Stigma tour, I may actually host one of the shows in drag. Ooh, nice. Whether it will be next Wednesday in Barry, I don't know. That will sort of be up to you, I guess, too, because if it is Barry, I'm going to need some help getting oh, this to look like a queen. Oh, well, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. I can beat your mug, no problem. And I would, I would need a drag name too. That's fine. We'll figure something I've, out. I've got one, but I can't say it on air because okay. I don't know that it's appropriate. That's fine. We'll keep it PG. It's it's, it's a yeah. wonderful name, but I probably can't use it. <laughs> My husband tells me not to anyway. So, so um, Wednesday night mm -hmm. we've got um, the Queens, we've got Trinity, we've got the choir. Um, we're doing a meet and greet afterwards, mm -hmm. um, hopefully for everyone, but certainly for the first fifty yeah. folks um, that will be there. What what can you tell us a little bit more about what your performance is going to look like at the show? Um, well, I'm a, a, like James was saying, you know, dancing is a huge thing um, when it comes to drag, uh, being able to hold yourself in either masculine or feminine manner on stage. And that was something that I always had a hard time with, you know, um, like I said in an interview, you know, it's kind of hard when you lumber around like a fridge in high heels. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been dancing now um, as a guest performer with the Army of Sass, which is a local um, high heel dance right. troupe. Um, they're actually all over Canada, uh, but Barry, um, Army of Sass Barry, shout out what what. Um, <laughs> The, uh, I've been an honorary member since last January and I just joined them last session and we'll actually just started our new session this uh, past week and I will be um, having a few of those lovely ladies join me on stage. We're going to do oh, a wonderful. choreographed dance number with them. Um, I have uh, four high heel backup dancers to uh, shake their booties with me and make me look ultra feminine professional. That's fantastic. I've seen some posts of, of you with the mm -hmm. Army of Sass, but unfortunately all of your performances have been when I haven't been in town yes, to, yes. to be able to, uh, to enjoy so, those. Well, there's one so. coming up in November. It's going to be our Christmas show. So, oh, cool. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, you have to let us know about that. 100%. Sure. And James? A little teaser on what we're gonna see? You will see something dark, something out of the box, a little bit out of the ordinary for me. Um, usually I like to interact with the audience, but for this number, I won't be. I, okay. I will be showing them off, if anything, and mm. making them more intrigued and entertained. Just love Interesting. The entertainment. Interesting, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> as well. I'm trying That's... to bring a little bit of sexuality into it too. Okay. So I uh, have a few moves that I wanna work on, so. That's awesome. Are you one number each, or uh, yeah, I'm all, not sure of the yeah, setup we're myself. All doing, yeah. We're all doing one number each. So okay. there's five of us performing, um, as well as Trinity being the, the headliner, plus the choir. Right. Uh, and sorry, who else is going to be there as well? Just uh, the the Queens Kings, Trinity, the choir. And the choir, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so all of us. We'll be doing our numbers and the choir will be performing and I know Trinity will probably be capping off the show, so... Yeah, I know at one point Trinity and I are going to do sort of a little Q&A yeah. and, and talk about the reason for the show. And Absolutely, and I, I think that's the most important thing too. I, everybody that I've been speaking to, they're so excited, not just for the drag performance, but to actually come and learn about um, HIV, where, it at, where it's at now. You know, growing up, you know, a child of you know, sorry, I should say, in my sexual childhood as a teenager, late uh, late teenage years, was in the 90s and early 2000s. And so when we were learning sexual health, it was to, to be afraid and don't touch people and wrap yourself in rubber. And, you know, we were afraid of, of who we were and as a sexual beings. And now we live in this age of information, education and medication. And, you know, people living with HIV nowadays live a normal, healthy, everyday life yeah. and grow up to be old. It's not a death sentence anymore and I think a lot of people still have that 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 mindset so I think this this show going across Canada is going to do wonders for the Canadian community yeah certainly raising that awareness is is a big part of the reason why I got involved mm -hmm. in this show uh, and you're right it's not a death sentence any longer mm -hmm. but part of the big issue is the fact that um, while we had back in the early days of the epidemic mm -hmm. all these public health campaigns mm -hmm. to protect each other um, we're not seeing that same sort of campaign to let folks know what HIV looks exactly. like today. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation out there and antiquated information mm -hmm. that needs to be shed. Because unfortunately, 
in 2019, there are still folks that die every day of age-related illnesses. Yes. And when we have the medication and the knowledge that all you need to be is on your meds and um, and you can get that undetectable status, mm -hmm. and even that, quite frankly, even if you are living with HIV and you aren't undetectable, you're still very little risk to anyone, mm -hmm. you know, of being able to... Uh, um, to contract the, the illness. And I liken HIV to diabetes. 100%. Uh, it's, it's, it's a chronic illness. Yeah. I take a pill a day yeah. and I'm fine. 100%. It's easier to manage than diabetes because I'm not constantly checking my, uh, my blood levels. I get lab work done every six months. And Another thing that I think people need um, a little bit more information <coughs> on is um, where to get yes. the medication from and how to be able to afford yeah. the medication. Yeah, and that's certainly a big challenge for us locally too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, aside from doing this show, as you know, I'm also the gay men's sexual health coordinator mm -hmm. at the Gilbert Center and do a lot of education around that and have a sexual health clinic that we run once a month. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, certainly access to medication and access to health care, period, yes. in an area as, as vast as ours and, and rural makes it, makes it very difficult. Absolutely, but, it does. But there are resources out there, like the Gilbert Center, to help folks if they have questions and concerns, mm -hmm. and uh, and we've got uh, doctors in Toronto that we can rely on as well. I have my my uh, um, HIV specialist is in Toronto, and my visits with him are all on the laptop. We oh, chat for go. five minutes and That's send amazing. him requisitions, and away travels. we go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Got to love technology, right? Absolutely. Listen, I am so grateful to have you on the show Thank this you. morning. Thank you. So Thank I know you it's uh, it's a little much to. Uh, get up early in the morning even though we're broadcasting at nine in the evening yeah. this show is taped in the morning and yeah. doing drag this early can be a bit of a challenge so I appreciate all the work that you've done to, to be here today no worries. and I am incredibly grateful um, that you're gonna be part of this Slay Stigma Tour thank as well. you we are it's gonna be incredibly fabulous. grateful to be a part of it so Wonderful. thank you so much thank you Justine thank always you, a pleasure James pleasure meeting you pleasure thank you very much you. for being on the show today thank you that's all for today remember Wednesday October 16th Georgian theater the Slay Stigma Tour is there live with the wonderful Trinity K Bonet from season six of RuPaul's Drag Race, and I'm hosting, so why wouldn't you be there? Thanks very much, folks. Have a good night. Gary, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, the audience knows, and, and you obviously know, that the positivity campaign is very near and dear to my heart as someone living with HIV. It's extremely important that we spread the word about what it means to folks living with HIV and the stigma associated with that. So just tell me a little bit about the Positivity Campaign, what you've been doing this summer and what you've got coming up this fall. Of course, yeah, it's my absolute pleasure. Um, so we're actually going to 24 Prides all across Canada uh, from coast to coast to coast and I personally get to go to 13 Prides. I'm so excited. Uh, I've been to seven. It's, it's been amazing. Um, and at each Pride we have a booth uh, and at this booth we have a pledge that says uh, people will use less stigmatic language than talking about HIV and people living with HIV. They sign the pledge, they get uh, tickets to our national drag tour uh, to see Trinity K. Bonet from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6, which is going to be super exciting. We're also going to have local drag performers and uh, certain other performers in different cities. I get, I get to host the uh, the entire Slay Stigma Tour at all 24 locations across Canada this October. And I am completely gobsmacked to have been asked to do this. Totally honored and I cannot wait to spend 30 days with a drag queen. <laughs>